Thanks for joining us. I'm Nancy Furness and this is Tri-Cities Community Television and we're filming on location today at Fountainhead Network in Port Coquitlam. Before we get started, I just wanted to um, say that we're grateful to be able to be filming on the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of Coquitlam First Nations. And we um, are grateful and thank the Coquitlam, Coquitlam peoples for continuing to live on these lands and to protect the lands and the waters and all that lies above and below. So this afternoon, I'm joined by Walter and Bonnie von, von Dribbenlin, and they're with the Kinsman, the Port Equipment Kinsman's Cup. So thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. You're very welcome. Thank you. And I wonder if we could just start off by um, having you tell us a little bit about who the Kinsmen are and how long the Port Equipment Kinsmen have been around. Okay. You go right ahead. <laughs> Kinsman, Kinsman was started in 1920 by a fellow called Harold Rogers. And um, he started the Kinsman as a young men's organization only because he could not get into the other, the other service groups because they were all either, either had to have a certain profession or, you know, you had to be a certain age or whatever. So he thought, nah, I'll, I'll start my own. So in 1920, he started it, and now kinsmen are right across Canada from St. John's, Newfoundland to Victoria, B.C. And they have clubs all across. So they have eight different districts across Canada, and we happen to be in District 5 here. So, um, yeah. So it sounds like it's a very inclusive space, that there's no sort of prerequisites as far as you were saying profession or um, religion or anything like no, that? No, and there isn't. And the only other thing is it's the only all-Canadian service group. Oh. So we do not, basically we do not send money outside of Canada. It's all raised in, basically in the cities where the clubs are. Because our motto is the community's greatest needs. Okay. So that's why you see when you go across Canada, you'll see baseball diamonds, you'll see uh, splash parks, you'll see all kinds of things all over the place that have the name Kinsman on it, because that's what they built in those particular communities. Well, now that you mention that, <laughs> we went on a bike trip um, last year and we camped at Kinsman Campgrounds mm -hmm. um, in Alberta. Alberta, I'm not sure if it's Saskatchewan, but definitely in Alberta, yeah. there were Kinsman's campgrounds along the They road. are all across yeah. Canada. And I know when you go into a town quite often, you see the Kinsman logo yes. when yes. you go in. Yes, you do. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the, maybe some of the projects that Kinsmen are involved in or have been involved in over the years? Whoa. Um, Sorry, that's maybe a really big question. Well, well, it is because, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of clubs that do different projects. Mm -hmm. You know, like, okay, our, our Kinsman projects ourselves. When BC Place was built, we basically got one of the suites and we raffled it off to raise funds for the community. Oh, so okay. each Kinsman club, club is in it does its does yeah. its own thing. Oh. Oh. Yes. Yeah. They're not connected. Oh, sorry, dear. <laughs> they're only the only way they're connected is by our national, which is in Hamilton, right. or Cambridge, Ontario. Okay. Okay. So each club basically has their own projects because each club, each, each city is different. Exactly. You know, right. not every city needs the same thing. Yeah. So basically, what they try and do is basically try and figure out exactly. Okay, what does the city need? You know, it's like here in Poco. You know, we raise our funds, or we've been lucky to, by having a good, basically a good, um, well, a good connection with the city. Because mm -hmm. we communicate well. We've been with them, well, for 42 years, basically because of the building also. And um, we've been allowed, they've given us, uh, we're able to do beer gardens for them. Well, okay, all those funds raised from the beer gardens, 85% of it goes back into the community. Oh, okay, so these are city-run beer gardens that you Well, run? yes, oh. that they invite us to do, like uh, the, uh, the bike race. Right, okay. Okay, and also up until last year, also the car show. 
May Day? And May Days, we've been made, doing May Days for 25 years. And in May Days, we also include the Poco Fourth Scouts, which they do, they put on the breakfast at May Days. Well, now you go back a little ways with the Poco Scouts, I think. Can you tell us we, uh, we go, yeah, we go relationship with them? Oh, about 25 years ago, the Poco Fourth, their sponsor kind of left them. So all of a sudden, uh, this gentleman at our, our building came to one of our meetings and said, you know, we're looking for sponsors. We don't have anybody. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, let's do it. So 25 years ago, we became their sponsors. In the early 90s, we bought them a trailer and filled it full of camping equipment and everything else and donated that to them. And they still run that trailer in the May Day Parade. Wow. <laughs> That's almost a legacy there. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yes, yes. It sounds like you're um, very good uh, community contributors. Um, can you talk a little bit more maybe about the relationship you have with the city and some ways that maybe the city has supported you? Um, you're talking about working together on fundraisers, uh, beer gardens and things like that. Are the, the city, yeah, the city has been very helpful to us. I mean, we, when we built the building in 1982, we, well, we didn't quite, we knew, we knew we wanted a building, but we had, we had more aspirations of building a much bigger building. <laughs> so we, we sent architectural drawings to Victoria, and at that time, probably in the quarter of a million dollar range, and they said, eh, Poco doesn't need a community center or a community hall. Uh, and we thought, nah, okay, that's fine. Well, we'll go to the city and see what happens there. So we went to the city. They were willing to give us a lease on the old Aggie grounds because the building had come down. It was old and dilapidated so and everything else. Area. <laughs> so, um, so we said, okay. So uh, at that time, which probably a lot of people don't know, is that we were the dis our club was the distributors of lottery tickets. This was before the government got into it. <laughs> and we had the, um, we had the Poco Tri-City area. So this was giving us funding at the time. And we, because basically we weren't getting funding anywhere else. So we thought, okay, well, we'll build a building. So we put up the building it cost us eighty thousand dollars wow. to put up that building. <clears throat> when we when we opened it, we had uh, we still had a twenty seven thousand dollar mortgage on it. We paid that off six months later, mm -hmm. and that was when Mayor Travelle was rest his soul uh, when he was uh, mayor. The only run-ins I've ever had with men, and I don't mind talking about that, is uh, that he wanted us to pay taxes on that build on the building. So you're and I kept and, and then paying taxes. And I kept and I and I kept okay. I, I kept I probably went to yeah I probably went to three years in a row probably went to council meetings council meetings saying well we're not going to pay taxes on money we raise from the community. So eventually they said, okay, you don't have to pay any taxes. All we need from you is sewer and water. And we said, okay, we'll agree with that. So that made a lot of difference to us raising funds for the community. So you can put those funds- Those funds go, go back, go, they, they go back into the community. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it was the tax thing and in the meantime, there is a matching grant thing that they run every year, and we've we they, we've been able to get into that probably four times, and it's probably saved us twenty thousand dollars on items we did fix in the building, because we've put a new roof on twelve years ago. We just during COVID we built a brand new kitchen, got it the whole kitchen, and they were all about twenty five percent involved from getting the funding from them. And just uh, right now we're working on the bulkhead on the building, putting, changing the bulkhead and putting up a new sign, a much brighter sign with finally we'll have our address on it. And um, yeah, and they're, they're covering about 20% of the cost of that because it's about a $15,000 bill. So 
And that is a beautiful building. I, I'm familiar with the inside of it. Now there's a kitchen, there's tables and chairs, and it's a nice open space. Yeah. And I think we were talking earlier about how, how nice it is to be able to decorate in there. And um, can you tell us a little bit about maybe some of the groups that use that space? That yes, I, there's a variety of yes, I can. Uh, at the moment, I have five groups in there, three AA groups and uh, <clears throat> two churches, one church that has meetings in there on Sundays, another one that uses uh, some of the time for music classes, and a an, uh, martial arts group that's in there Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The three AA groups have been with me for 17 years, or have been meeting at the Kinsman Hall for 17 years. And uh, they've all, Basically, I don't know, what I've instituted is try to, it's not easy to keep track of, I mean, we put about fifteen to 17,000 people a year through that building. Not easy to keep track of <laughs> who's doing what. So I tried to make every group as responsible as, as, as we could for themselves, and it's really worked well, because it wasn't easy through COVID, because everybody had, you know, it was tough. It was tough for us, because there was a lot of times we couldn't even rent the building. but. They all, they all did what they were supposed to do, and I think it's, and I think overall, they really did a good job in coming through COVID. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been, it's been a good thing for the community. I mean, even with the, I mean, I, when the Hope Lutheran Church came to us and said, you know, we're looking for space. I said, I don't have any space. And then they said, well, we only need a few hours here, a few hours there. So I looked at my schedule and fitted them in, and they, I got them nine hours a week for their school year. And it made, again, it made a difference of getting money for that building so that, we, that nobody needs to support us. We can support ourselves. And I think you were mentioning earlier that it's um, 365 days a year that building is being used. There is, Obviously yeah. Obviously a big community <laughs> need there. Um, our time is running to I know, I'm right? sure. Um, we have so much to talk about. I know. Like, um, I have a question for Bonnie about women in Kinsman. Yes. Is, it, is this a club? You had mentioned um, men at the beginning. Is Kinsman also open to women or is it just men? No, it's always, it started as men. And then they had women, we just helped originally when it was started back east. And then we formed, the women wanted their own, so they made what we called Kinets. Oh. So we had kinsmen and Kinets. And over the time, um, the Kinets did a lot, we did a lot of our own fundraising and a lot of functions, and we supported our kinsmen and everything that they did. So we, it meant a lot, we had a lot more manpower in that when we went out. Well, over the time and the way the society and things have changed, um, the whole membership of kin across Canada has dropped phenomenally. I think that's a common challenge. Well, when it started out, yeah. I feel that it started with, they were looking for fellowship. Right. Okay, so that's where you met your friends. And that's where you, they did volunteering and stuff. Well, nowadays, it's school. It's with your kids. You're always out fundraising if you have a child because they don't get supported from sports anymore or for swimming or for skating like they used to. They have to get their own funding. So we find we lose out on that. So, but anyway, what came about is what most of the Connect clubs, a lot of them have folded, like ours folded quite some time ago. Um, I was honored to be able to run the province in uh, 91, 92. And uh, at that time, I had about 400 canets in the province. So, and now we're down to quite a few. So uh, they still help, but now they're allowed to join kinsmen. And they are, if they start a new club, it's just called kin. Oh, okay. It's so called it's a called a kin club. So that's how you can. Really inclusive. It, yeah, it's all inclusive now. It's like it, it's no problem whatsoever. The only thing is with our Port Coquitlam kinsmen, everyone knows kinsmen. Yes. So they don't want to change the name. We have. Sorry, I called you Kinsman because that's how I. Yeah. No, no. No, it is. But that's. But it is. That's how fine. we refer to it. That's and right. he doesn't want to. He's not going to change the name. Or not he. Like just you. <clears throat> but the club. They let, they're proud of being the Port Coquitlam Kinsman. They don't want to turn around and all of a sudden be Port Coquitlam Kin because people are going to wonder okay, who are they? What are they doing? Right. So, though we have women in, the organized, in our club now. It's still called it's the Port Coquitlam Kinsman, but it's open. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, and then one last question. 
how can people join if they were interested in joining you or learning more about the kinsmen how can they get in touch with you don't look it up in the phone book because you'll get the Coquitlam kinsmen. They're listed. I know. Well, they <laughs> have a website listed. and we they have don't. A website and we don't have we one have, yet. They have a website and we don't. <laughs> it's it's all by word of mouth. Uh, it's Love you know it. it's like it's like the last three people that just joined with us. It was um, yeah it was three women. Two yeah it's two, oh, two two women. Two women. Oh, so I'm sorry. Tammy and two women. Tammy and Michelle. And then Rebel. Yes, and Rebel. And um, it was uh, it was all by them being involved in helping us because I mean we're we're still you know with all these beer gardens and everything we always we're always talking to somebody. So all they need to do is <laughs> talk to somebody <laughs> who's running a beer garden. But we haven't had any beer gardens for the last two years, so it's been really um, you know it's not, it's not been easy. They could call our. They could call our number at the Kinsman Center, which is uh, Don't look at me. 604-945-7018. If you say so. Mm, yeah. We can find that out. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Because, I mean, our, our, but, our, Kinsman, our Kinsman Center does, ha does have a number, and we do have some things on the doors how to get in touch with us. And you're mm. so much out and so much a part of the community that you do, you know, sort of connect that way as well, and network and everything. Yeah. So, um, Thank you so much for joining this afternoon and for telling us a little bit more about oh. the, the Kinsmen and the Kinsmen Center. Um, <laughs> Thank you for having us. Great to learn more. Thank mm -hmm. you for having us. We will keep in touch. And thank we you will. For all that you do in the community. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So thanks for joining us, Tri-Cities Community TV. And we were speaking uh, to Walter and Bonnie Van Drimmelen from the Kinsmen of Port Coquitlam.